Titanic, British transatlantic steamer, the second ship of the Olympic class. Built in Belfast at the Holland and Wolf Shipyard from 1909 to 1912 by order of the shipping company White Star Line. At the time of commissioning, it was the largest vessel in the world. On the night of April 14, 15, 1912, during the first voyage, it crashed in the North Atlantic, colliding with an iceberg. The Titanic was equipped with two four-cylinder steam engines and a steam turbine. The entire power plant had a capacity of liters. From the liner could reach speeds of up to 23 knots, 42 km slash h. Its displacement, which exceeded the twin steamer Olympic by 243 tons, was 50 to 310 tons. The ship's hull was made of steel. The hold and lower decks were divided into 16 compartments by bulkheads with sealed doors. If the bottom was damaged, the double bottom prevented the ingress of water into the compartments. The Titanic was called virtually unsinkable by Shipbuilder magazine, a statement widely circulated in the press and among the public. In accordance with outdated regulations, the Titanic was equipped with 20 lifeboats, with a total capacity of people, which was only a third of the maximum load of the steamer. The Titanic's cabins and public spaces were divided into three classes. A swimming pool, a squash court, and Lockhart restaurant, two cafes, and a gym were presented to the services of first-class passengers. All classrooms had dining and smoking rooms, open and closed promenades. The most luxurious and sophisticated were the first-class interiors, made in various artistic styles using expensive materials such as mahogany, gilding, stained glass, silk, and others. The cabins and saloons of the third class were designed as simply as possible, the steel walls were painted white or sheathed with wooden panels. On April 10, 1912, the Titanic sailed from Southampton to New York on her maiden and only voyage. Having made stops in the French Cherbourg and Irish Queenstown, the liner sailed into the Atlantic Ocean with 1317 passengers and 908 crew members on board. Scheduled to arrive in New York on April 17, the ship was commanded by Captain Edward Smith. On April 14, the Titanic radio station received seven ice warnings, but the liner continued to move at almost top speed. To avoid encountering floating ice, the captain ordered to go slightly south of the usual route. On April 14, at 11.39 p.m., the lookout reported to the captain's bridge about the iceberg straight ahead. Less than a minute later, a collision occurred. Having received several holes, the steamer began to sink. First of all, women and children were put into boats. At 2.20 a.m. On April 15, breaking in two, the Titanic sank, killing people. 712 survivors were picked up by the steamer Carpatia. The wreckage of the Titanic rests at a depth of 3750 m. They were first discovered by the expedition of Robert Ballard in 1985. Subsequent expeditions raised thousands of artifacts from the bottom. The bow and stern parts have gone deep into the bottom silt and are in a deplorable state, and it is not possible to raise them to the surface intact. At the beginning of the 20th century, there was intense competition in the transatlantic shipping market between the shipping companies Cunard Line and White Star Line. They were both British, but White Star Line was part of the American Trust International Mercantile Marine Company AIM, and Cunard Line was under the influence of the British Admiralty. In 1907, Cunard Line put into operation the steam turbine ships Mauritania and Lusitania, at that time the largest ships in the world. In addition, they were able to reach speeds of up to 25 knots, 46 km h, which allowed them to cross the Atlantic Ocean in five days. The appearance of large, fast, and reliable liners from the main competitor had a detrimental effect on the profit of the White Star Line. Its CEO, Joseph Bruce Ismay, in consultation with the president of the Irish shipyard Harland & Wolf, William Peary decided to build two superliners, not as fast as Lusitania and Mauritania, but exceeding them in terms of displacement, passenger capacity and service level. As conceived by the heads of the shipping company, the steamer Olympic was to be the first to enter service. And ten months later, Titanic, named after the heroes of ancient Greek myths, the Titans, who set out to overthrow the Olympian gods, for which they were overthrown by them in Tartarus. The design of the Olympic-class ships was undertaken by the Harland & Wolf Design Council. 
It included the head of the shipyard, William Peary, managing director Alexander Carlyle, director of the design bureau Thomas Andrews and his deputy Edward Wilding. Carlyle developed the project of the hull, drew up plans for the installation of machines and mechanisms. Andrews was fully responsible for the development of project documentation. Design drawings took up 411 separate documents. After reviewing the main ones, the White Star Line Management entered into an agreement on the construction of two giant liners with the Harland and Wolf shipyard, with which it had close economic relations for a long time. Construction to maintain a competitive edge among shipbuilding centers, Belfast shipyard Harland and Wolf began construction of the largest dry dock in the world back in 1903. William Peary foresaw an increase in ship size in the short term. The new structure was named Thompson Dry Dock, and the contracts for its construction were signed in 1903 with a term of 3.5 years. London-based Scott and Middleton was the main contractor, but local companies were also involved in the work. The dock was 259 meters long, 39 meters wide, and 6 meters thick. Expensive dredging works were carried out at the mouth of the Lagan River prior to construction. The dock was intended for the completion and refurbishment of large ships such as the Olympic-class liners. For the construction of the Olympic and Titanic, the first ships of the Olympic class, the three old construction sites of the shipyard had to be converted into two new ones. In preparation for the construction of liners over two new slipways, the bridge building company Sir William Arrell and Olorado. Gantry frames with a height of 69.5 m, a width of 83 m, and a Massachusetts of over 6,000 tons were erected, and a 200-ton frame tower portal crane with a 60-meter boom was erected above them, the largest in the world at the time. To perform all kinds of lifting work, 12 more auxiliary mobile cranes and 6 moving farms were installed, 3 above each slipway. Staple period. The blueprints for the future giant were approved on July 29, 1908. The Titanic was assigned serial number 401, the keel of the liner was laid on March 31, 1909. The construction of Titanic was carried out according to the classical scheme, on the horizontal keel, a monolithic steel bar 7.62 cs thick, a vertical one was installed. Beams were attached to it, connected by steel riveted sheets, which formed the flooring of the second bottom. On the sides of the keel bar, stringers were installed to provide longitudinal rigidity along the length of the hull. On ships of the Olympic class, four bottom stringers were installed on each side between the central beam and the outer sheet. In addition to them, additional stringers were installed under the future engine room to increase rigidity. After the construction of the flooring of the second bottom, steel frames, which were shaped beams, were installed perpendicular to the keel from both sides. The frames of the right and left sides were connected by transverse steel beams, beams on which the deck decks were attached. By November 20, 1909, the main metal frame was ready, a frame made of bulkheads and 300 transverse steel frames. Frames with a height of 20m reached the flooring of the 6th deck, deck B, and were separated from each other at a distance of 91cs, but in the bow, this distance was reduced to 60cs, and in the aft, to 69cs. In the area of the location of heavy machines and mechanisms, the strength was increased by installing frame frames across short distances. The chip's frame was sheathed with steel sheets 91.87 m thick from 2.5 to 3.8 cs, the Massachusetts fluctuating depending on the thickness in the range from 2.5 to 4.5 tons. The outer skin sheets were the same size as the deck sheets. Dimensions were standard for steel making at the time. For the construction of the Titanic, steel of the highest grade was used, which for many years after it remained the industrial standard. However, the steel sheets had a slight defect even before fastening. The fact is that at the Harland and Wolf shipyard, rivet holes were perforated in a cold way using a punch and a sledgehammer, as a result of which microcracks were formed along the periphery of the holes. The sheets were fastened with three rows of steel and iron rivets. The iron for the rivets was not of the highest quality. When ordering material for rivets, Highland and Wolf opted for Barno. Three of the best standard, while most shipbuilders already then preferred to use Sample No. Four best best, traditionally used for the manufacture of anchors, chains and rivets. The tensile strength in Sample No. 
for was close to 80% of the similar characteristics of steel, while in O. 3 it was only 73%. In total, the construction of the Titanic took over 3 million rivets. 75% of them were hammered by hand, the rest using a hydraulic riveting gun. The construction of the Titanic was carried out by about workers. The youngest of them were 12, 13 years old. The boys worked with rivets, they heated them up in portable coke ovens to a temperature of 815, 990 C and quickly brought them to the indicated place. At the time, little attention was paid to compliance with safety regulations. This explains a large number of accidents. During the time of the dead, six workers of them fell on the slipway from falling from a great height, two more died in the shops and auxiliary premises of the shipyard. 246 people were injured, 28 of them were serious, amputation of limbs, crushing of bones. Launching. The launch of the liner was preceded by a long preparation. First the scaffolding was taken apart. Then the Massachusetts of the stolen completely built vessel was transferred from the kilo blocks to hydraulic triggers, after which the supports and racks were removed from under the bottom, which supported the hull in the required position, and wooden sleds were attached. At the end of this operation, the slopes were thoroughly lubricated. To launch a large vessel, 23 tons of locomotive oil, fish oil grease, and liquid soap was used for these purposes. On May 31, 1911, on the occasion of the launch of the Titanic, about people gathered on the Belfast embankment and on the sandbanks of the Lagan River. A big resonance was also caused by the fact that on the same day the White Star Line planned to leave Belfast for the successfully passed Sea Trials Olympic. On a special podium near the ship's hull were guests of honor, the owner of the Intrust John Pierpont Morgan, Joseph Bruce Ismay with his daughter Margaret, Lord and Lady Peary, the Mayor of Belfast and other dignitaries. Three more stands were installed not far from the bow, two for invited guests, one for the press. Like all ships of the White Star Line Company, the Titanic did not undergo the traditional rite of baptism, a bottle of champagne was not broken on its side. Around noon, shipyard president William Peary made a final round, giving the workers another briefing. At this time, a signal rocket took off into the air, urging all small vessels to leave the bay, as the time of descent was approaching. For the same reason, a red flag was raised at the stern of the Titanic. At 12.13, the triggers were released using a hydraulic trigger, the ship began to move along the inclined plane of the slipway. At 12.14, the Titanic safely left the stocks astern in 62 seconds into the Lagan River. For braking, six anchors and two anchor chains of 80 tons each attached to the ship were used, which dragged along the bottom stopping the Titanic, which developed a speed of 12 knots. The new liner passed half of its length to a full stop. Completion of construction. After launching, the Titanic was towed to the outfitting berth, where further work took place. During the completion of the construction, it was necessary to install all the heavy equipment, boilers, steam engines, a turbine, a tiller, generators, and other units, put up chimneys and masts, bring communications, and furnish the premises. At the time of the start of outfitting work, the Massachusetts of the ship, in fact, only a frame sheet with sheets, was 26,000 tons. At first, the Titanic was no different from its twin Olympic. Bruce's mate took part in the first flight of the Olympic, during the trip, he noted a number of minor flaws that were corrected on the Titanic. In particular, his mate drew attention to the overly spacious promenade decks. On the Titanic, extra space was occupied by additional cabins. Also on the Titanic, the first-class reception hall was enlarged, which seemed too cramped for Ismay on the Olympic. The third change concerned the first-class promenade, promenade, on deck A, the head of the company considered that on the Titanic, the bow of the deck should be glazed to protect passengers from rain and wind. Heavy equipment was installed in place using a German floating crane with a lifting capacity of 250 tons. The boilers were lowered into the boiler rooms through the chimney shafts. The casting of parts and production of mechanisms were carried out by the foundry and assembly shops, mainly by Harland and Wolf. Before the start of finishing work, electrical equipment, water supply, and ventilation system were installed. On September 18, 1911, the White Star Line announced the preliminary date of the Titanic's maiden voyage, March 20, 1912. On September 20, the Olympic collided with the cruiser Hawk, 
the line needed urgent repairs in the dry dock Harland and Wolf. To complete all the repair work as soon as possible, about, workers were recalled to the Olympic from the Titanic. The delay forced to postpone the departure date to April 10. Four chimneys were installed in December. In January 1912, 20 lifeboats were delivered on the upper deck of the Titanic, and the captain's bridge was erected. At the beginning of February, three propellers were installed in dry dock on the Titanic, the final painting of the hull was performed, including below the waterline, and a wireless communication system was established. By the end of March 1912, the bulk of the work on the liner was completed. On March 30, the new steamer was insured for a period of one year by the Atlantic Company, a member of the insurance corporation Lloyds of London, in the amount of US$5 million, despite the fact that its construction cost White Star Line US$7.5 million. The insurance covered both the total loss of the vessel and its failure. Subscribe to the channel and like it. Write a comment on the video thereby you support the channel.